The Seattle Seahawks lose at home in overtime to the Los Angeles Rams. Welcome back to another episode of the Seattle Sports Show, where we love Seattle pro sports. I'm your host, Mikey, and we are here to talk about the Seattle's losing in overtime to the Los Angeles Rams at home. All right, let's start at the end. In overtime, fourth and one, in field goal range, we decide to go for it and get stuffed on a run play. That allows the Rams to only need a field goal to win the game. They end up with a touchdown. You lose 20 to 26. So was that the right decision? Was it the right decision to go for it on fourth and one in that situation? If you look at all the uh, pro analytics guys, they're going to say, yes, that was the right decision. Absolutely. In fact, uh, in those situations, the odds of getting a successful uh, first down conversion in those situations, it increases by 14.8% or whatever it is. Okay, but that's taking into account um, all these situations throughout all of NFL history. And you have to, as a coaching staff, look at the now, look at your roster and be able to say, can our team do this? And then say no and go for the field goal, get the points at least come away with something so that the Rams are forced to at least, at, you know, they're forced to at least get the field goal, not be put in a situation where they can say, oh, all we need is a field goal to win, so the pressure is off. No, you have to put some sort of pressure on them, okay? And you have to look at your staff and you, your, your roster, your players' abilities, and be able to scout well enough to know if they can do it or not i mean i don't know what they saw at any point during this game that gave them confidence at this offensive line i don't know what they saw at any point during this season every game of this season that gave them any sort of confidence that their offensive line could block well enough to gain one yard i don't care if it's a passing play i don't care if it's a running play this offensive line is straight garbage and could not gain you one yard in a uh, desperate situation like that if their lives depended on it. They are a horrible unit. Okay, this they would absolutely not be able to get it done, and John Schneider should be embarrassed that this is what he put together this offseason. So, no, I don't think it was a good decision by the coaching staff. I don't think it was the right decision, where, again, the pro analytics guys are going to say, no, that's absolutely the right decision uh, don't blame the coaching staff. That's a, absolutely what they should have done. Well, I don't think the players could get it done, and that's on the coaching staff to know whether or not they can get that done and, and to put their team in, a, in the best situation to win. And putting their team in the situation where they were going to have to block well enough to gain one yard um, was not was not the right decision. Okay? Um, so that's where we go. That's where we start at the end. Uh, you know, let me know how you feel. If you feel differently, was that the right decision or not to go for it on fourth and one in overtime? Uh, again, it would have forced the Rams to have to at least get the field goal, or they could have said, hey, we wanted to go for the win, and they could put themselves in four down situation and, and go for the win. But um, at least they would have had some sort of, you know, pressure put on them to do something. Uh, let's see here. Um, just quickly looking at the stats, Geno Smith, 21 for 34, 363 yards, uh, three touchdowns, three interceptions. Uh, that was good enough for a 90 rating, even after being sacked seven times for a, a total of minus 46 yards. Okay. Um, so Geno, for the most part, played well, uh, except for especially those two interceptions that were just, I have no idea. At, at some point, I thought he was playing for the Rams because he was throwing it right to them. The one to Kinchins was right to him. They tried to show on the TV broadcast that um, he was hit at the same time that he was throwing and maybe his arm was also affected by that. 
but uh, where I saw he was trying to throw it to, it looked like maybe that was JSN that was in the back of the end zone there. Uh, I don't remember for sure. But either way, he, whoever it was, was completely covered. That was not going to be a good decision anyways. So uh, I don't know what he saw there. I don't know why he was trying that. And then the next thing we see is him throwing it again straight to a, a Rams defender. Um... Did I say Bills early? Yeah, so I thought he was playing there for the Rams <laughs> there for a minute. So, because uh, he was throwing it right to them. And then the second one, same thing, straight to him. Again, uh, this time I will put it even more on the offensive line. Obviously, the first one, he was, he was yeah, he was hit at the same time because there was pressure coming, but it was a bad decision. This one, it was the offensive line's fault. Still a bad decision by Gino. He should have been paying attention and saw that A.J. Barner was locked up um, and engaged with a defender but maybe he just didn't have enough time to see that because again the offensive line was so bad that they were right on top of Gino and they in fact they were so bad that's the reason why AJ Barner was locked up with the defender uh, still at that point in the play uh, AJ Barner should have been uh, you know the dump off guy open but no the offensive line played so bad that Barner uh, is forced to engage with um, a defender there straight trash by the offensive line uh but then again still not a good decision uh by gino uh he should have been throwing that one into the ground at, at barner's feet um instead of trying to complete a pass there so still wasn't good by uh, gino um looking at at k9 25 carries so a lot we got to see a lot more balanced game 20 34 pass attempts 25 carries but just 83 yards his long was a 10-yard run. We're used to K9 being able to have those like home run type of hit plays, right? We didn't see that this game. We didn't see a 20, 30, 40-yarder in this game because, again, that offensive line was just straight garbage. Um, K9 had no chance. Again, I don't know what running back has any chance behind this offensive line uh, right now. We did get to see JSN step up big again in a second game uh, in a row here without DK Metcalf, seven receptions, 180 yards, two touchdowns, uh, some clut clutch catches in key situations, uh, you know, looking like a younger, uh, you know, uh, what we used to expect out of Tyler Lockett. Tyler Lockett had three for 63 yards in this game in a touchdown. So uh, that was good to see JSN uh, stepping up here. And um, yeah, uh, you know, Again, the only reason why you're able to do that is because Gino did play so well most of the game, even with all the pressure he was facing. Again, also getting sacked seven times. Um, it, but unfortunately, again, he did cost us with those bad decisions in the red zone because again, if he doesn't make those bad decisions in the, in the end zone there, maybe we don't even go to overtime because you're at least walking out of those situations with field goals and then at the end of the game, the Rams would be behind and they would have the ones been forced to be going for uh, a touchdown to try to win the game. Uh, so again, really bad play from the offensive line, really bad decision making. Again, um, Gino losing uh, concentration on a snap, uh, a couple other snaps just being uh, horrible again. Uh, you know, shooting ourselves in the foot with like big time mistakes. Uh, here, here's the one positive that we're going to take out of this game, all right? Kyron Williams, 22 carries for 69 yards, averaging just 3.1. The defensive line and the linebackers as units looked way better in this game. So it looks like the moves that they were making, plus some players getting healthier, did make a difference. Um, you know, again, allowing just 3.1 average per rush in this game, much better than like the 5.4 or whatever we were rushing uh, we were allowing going into this game so uh, hopefully that is going to be a trend because we're going to need that to happen um when we come out of the bye because we are heading into a bye week and we need to figure out how to improve this team um looking at our last couple little stats here cooper cup 11 receptions for 104 yards to marcus robinson six for 94 tyler johnson three for 38 um I'm not I'm not I'm not gonna um 
rag on the defensive backs in this game. They had tough matchups. Uh, some of the catches that were made were just amazing catches and amazing throws, like perfect throws and amazing catches. Uh, so I'm not going to get too mad at the defensive backs. Okay, that's just that that's that's NFL, that's competition, and and that happens sometimes. Sometimes they just get a little bit better of you but at least uh i didn't see like a lack of skill or effort there like we did see from you know a lack of skill from our offensive line all right so um getting through all this we got to look at what happened at the end of the day we lose we we dropped a four and five we went from first place in the division to now last place. The Cardinals won their five and four. 49ers are on by four and four, but they have a win over you. The Los Angeles Rams are four and four, but now they have a win over you. So you are now in last place of the division. You're heading into a bye week, and you have a lot of questions on how this team is going to get better. And this team is not going to win a lot more games and not going to get a lot better with the offensive line play that we're getting. And I don't see a path to improve this offensive line because we're, at the time of this recording, I'm recording this on November 4th. The trade deadline is November 5th. Um, and off and teams are not trading good offensive linemen. I know John Schneider said he feels like um, guards are often overdrafted and overpaid. And uh, that may be the case, but they're also not they're not plentiful, right? The supply and demand. There's only so many good ones out there. And so if there's teams out there with a good one, they're not getting rid of them. So you're not going to all of a sudden improve your offensive line uh, through acquiring different talent. So what they need to do is the coaching staff needs to get this offensive line to play better. And uh, that's the only way we're going to be able to uh, come out of this thing with a good enough record to get into the playoffs. Uh, is by improved offensive line play because I see everything else improving or being good enough to get there but this offensive line is absolutely going to hold you back 100% um, and you can't tank you can't let's let's talk about that let's talk about uh, the let's talk about what's going to go on this season and in the future so you you can't tank you can't play to lose the rest of the season here i see people talking about how oh at this point we should just lose because we are in last place now and the way things are trending it is looking like it'd be more likely for us to end up in last place in the division than in first because everybody else in our division is on a winning trend while we are on a losing trend losing out of our last five out of six but the seahawks are not a horrible team they are not a bad team obviously we are not elite or a great team we're just a good team but we're not bad because let me tell you new england jacksonville new orleans carolina cleveland las vegas new york miami tennessee that's nine teams i just read off to you there they all only have two wins how many of them do you expect to get three more wins this season? Do you expect New England, Jacksonville, New Orleans, Carolina, Cleveland, Las Vegas, New York, Miami, or Tennessee to win three more games this season? That's what it would take for you to just be able to sniff a top 10 pick. Right now, if the season ended today, we'd have the 14th pick. And we'd have to uh, have multiple of those nine teams that I just read off win three more games while you lost the rest of your games this season to get into a top 10 pick. Is that really what you want to go through? You want to hope that you lose every single game the rest of the season while the uh, trash teams of this uh, league uh, hoping that they win three more games each? And again, you would need multiple of them to win three more games to get into the top 10. And then you would need at least like half of them to win three more games if you were hoping to get a top five pick. So that's why you can't tank and that's why you can't want to tank. Um, be this coaching staff is another reason why you can't want them to tank because this coaching staff needs to win build a winning culture. Uh, a lot of these players are going to be around. Uh, we don't have a lot of players with like, you know, or you know star players that are 
kind of have expiring contracts that you go, hey, uh, let's just get rid of everybody and uh, start over and, and build a new culture. That's that's just not the way the Seahawks are set up. That's not what that coaching staff was brought in here to do. So you got to build uh, a winning culture with with the roster that you have. There could be some major changes um, they could talk about, but a majority of this roster is going to be around for a while. So you need to build uh, a winning culture. Um, so you, you, you absolutely can't tank. Um, even if you only win, you know, win one or two more games this season and you hope that like, uh, let's see here, the Jets, the Cowboys, the Colts, and the Bengals start winning some more games. Again, that's only gaining you a couple more spots in the draft order to where you're ending up at maybe 10, somewhere between the 10 to 15 range. And you're right, like I said, right now you're at 14. So um, you'd have to stay bad and hope that a whole lot of teams ahead of you started getting better just to get into the, you know, let's say, since we're already 14, just to say that we, maybe you hope, you end up to hope at pick somewhere between 9 to 13, okay? So that's not going to be a fun season, and that's not going to be a good season for your, your players and, and, and the culture of this organization going forward. So no, it's not a good idea to tank. Um, you know, and, and unfortunately there's... Again, nothing you can do to improve this offensive line through trades this season, uh, you know, unless they do something surprising and some other team makes some sort of surprising move to trade good offensive linemen uh, at this point in the season, which I don't think is going to happen. So what can we do? Um, well, again, unfortunately, I don't think there's anything we can do this season except for just hope that the coaching staff gets this offensive line to play better as a unit. Um and just hope i mean there's nothing we can do player acquisition wise to get better so we're just going to have to hope that the players actually just play better if that's not the case uh and we do end up you know this season uh losing not making the playoffs then in my opinion let's talk about like the future future after this season there needs to be some major changes made um we need to start thinking about how is this team going to get going forward because we're again over halfway point of this season we know what this team is now um and and we can and we can start looking to the future of what we want this team to be because we know what this team is and we know what we don't want we don't want this offensive line uh, and how can we improve it um everybody knows the dk metcalf tra uh, trade talk that's out there uh uh, Mike Salk brings it up regularly on his uh, radio show. That is an option. That is somebody this offseason you could trade away, you could get value for, and uh, you know, and, and and hope that John Schneider is making the correct <laughs> decisions with those uh, with whatever you get for him to to improve your offensive line. That that is one thing. Uh, and that would be an option. I think there's multiple options. Um, Tyler Lockett. Remember, he restructured his deal. So most of his money was already guaranteed. Next year, he would have a $30 million uh, cap hit. DK, basically 30... Let, let's, let's round these numbers up. So basically next year, DK Metcalf has a $32 million cap hit. Tyler Lockett has $31 million. That's a $1 million difference. Now, the difference here is, I know we've been talking about uh, Mike Salk, right? He's been talking about it a lot, about, oh, well, you got to trade DK because that's too much money in tied up in that position. Well, Tyler Lockett, he is, what, five years older and only going to be $1 million less than DK Metcalf. Now, am I saying that you can trade Tyler Lockett? No. But maybe you could, and maybe you can get something decent for him, um, even at his age. You're not going to get a top pick, but you could get something valuable. You just traded away a fourth-round pick to get Ernest Jones. Um, 
trading Tyler Lockett away would sure do a whole lot going towards being able to re-sign somebody like a Ernest Jones. Um, because the way we restructured Tyler Lockett's deal this year, he got a lot of that money upfront guaranteed. So he'd have a $31 million cap hit next year, but he'd only have a $4 million dead cap hit. So you could trade him away and you would be saving yourself $27 million. You could cut him and save that amount of money as well if you needed to. So um, DK is not the only option at that position that you could think about you know, trading or cutting to save yourself money and find ways to uh, sign somebody back like Ernest Jones and keep this linebacker core going the direction that it's been going since we acquired him. You can also then have some uh, money to go out there and acquire yourself, um, you know, free agent uh, offensive linemen. Or again, we're going after them in, in the in the draft with you know maybe possibly you're you know again getting maybe a fourth fifth round pick for tyler lockett you're using that to try to improve that offensive line uh geno smith now here's my opinion on geno smith all right and all three guys that we're talking about right now right by the way geno smith dk metcalf and tyler lockett they all have the highest cap hit cap hits uh next year now for geno smith I think he is a really good quarterback. I do not believe he is elite. I think you can win with Geno Smith, but I don't think you can win because of Geno Smith. He is not the guy that can carry a team on his back to the Super Bowl. He is the type of guy where if everything around him is good, then he could get that team. You know, they could all get together. To, uh, they could all get to the Super Bowl together, and he could play well enough in that Super Bowl to win you to win it you never know right it's the NFL <laughs> it's football it could happen but I don't think he's the type of guy that carries the team on his back to a Super Bowl and you win the Super Bowl because of Geno Smith you got to have all the other pieces around him so here's another thing you could do if if that's you know what you believe about Geno Smith and he's going into the last year of his deal next year as well you can trade Geno Smith, right? Uh, it, it's reported out there that, you know, he's going to want a new deal. It's reported out there that other teams, there's multiple teams out there who would pay him. And already they're talking about the market for Geno Smith being over $50 million a year. Now, if you did something like that, you're not going to be able to improve that offensive line. And as I just said, I think Gino is the type of guy that you need the right pieces around him. You're not going to do it because of him. And you're, if you pay him that amount, then you're it's going to, that's going to be the type of amount of money that you pay a quarterback that you win because of. And I don't think Gino Smith is that type of guy. So you could trade Gino Smith and, and get good value for him. There's uh, some teams out there. Uh, that reportedly want him uh, and how much can you get out of Geno Smith right so if you can get some value for Geno Smith do you start you know th that's one way one you're saving you know even off of next year's cap hit he's got a oops got my alarm here <laughs> uh, he's got a three eight and a half million cap hit right but a, thir a dead cap of 13 and a half million so you'd be freeing up 25 million in cap space again uh and then whatever draft value you're able to get out of him that you're using that to you know acquire a better offensive line for another quarterback to uh, hopefully be playing behind a better offensive line plus uh you know draft value plus your um you know your uh your cap space to maybe being going out and signing some you know proven players there as well um so yeah there's multiple options uh, those would be my top three choices and they just all happen to have the top three uh cap hits uh next season and i think they're ones that you can get value out of whether it's uh you know cap space value like a, a geno smith dk metcalf um or Sorry, the, the trade value, like Geno Smith and DK Metcalf being able to get a higher uh, 
picks in the in the draft or a title like it where maybe even you're only getting somewhere in the mid to late rounds but again because of the dead cap and the way his uh restructured deal was this year you're gaining a ton of cap space okay and, and um i don't think any one of those moves and you could make m multiple of those moves if you wanted to you could get you could trade gino and and lock it uh get younger at quarterback and at receiver you could just trade dk metcalf and say okay is that going to be enough to free up enough cap space and use a draft pick to improve the offensive line um and hopefully that you know you hope that jsn um steps up and tyler lockett doesn't you know drop off in the next year as getting older but then you'd probably be looking to draft a wide receiver uh, as well um you know but m multiple ways to attack it right um going after the cap space to go get uh proven veterans for your offensive line or you know trading trading somebody in their prime like a dk metcalf to get a uh, better draft value while also getting some cap space and then same thing with geno smith um probably because of the position he's at you get some draft value plus a ton of uh cap space as well so i don't know let me know are any of those three moves that you would do trade geno smith dk metcalf or tyler lockett um you know otherwise again this is looking forward to next year um and what we can do about this offensive line what what do you think we can do are, are you just going to hope hey um somewhere in that you know 12 to 17 draft pick range that we're looking to be at in right now there's going to be a you know great offensive linemen that we can get and that there's going to be multiple other ones uh, throughout the draft that we're going to get because that's what it's going to take for this offensive line to improve it's going to take multiple and you're going to need cap space and draft picks to get it done so uh, i'm just kind of curious what you guys would do to get it done all right well that's my thoughts on this um seahawks loss in this game and what they can do to improve in the future um yeah let, let me know what you think give me those comments um subscribe hit the like button share it with your friends because i want to know I, I just want to know what everybody's thinking about this all right and uh yeah thanks for listening to the seattle sports show where we watch legends awaken so take cover because with the sea of sound you will see us rise to reign supreme and win forever go hawks